Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to find integer powers of i. So let's say we have something like i to the 53rd. Okay, well before we talk about that, we're going to talk about smaller powers of i and look for patterns. So let's say we have i to the 0. Well, if we take anything that's not 0 and raise it to the 0 power, we just get 1. So i to the 0 is 1. What about i to the 1st? Well, i to the 1st is just i. Okay, what about i squared? Well, i squared is just negative 1, right? So remember that whole thing with complex numbers is that i squared is negative 1. And then how about i cubed? i cubed is i squared times i. i squared is negative 1, i is just i. So this is negative 1 times i, which is negative i. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the next four. So i to the 0, 1, 2, 3, next is i to the 4th i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, which is negative one, okay, times negative one. Well, negative one times negative one is just positive one, right? So this is positive one, okay? So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now, what about i to the fifth? i to the fifth, now here's where things start to get good, is i to the fourth times i to the first. Well, i to the fourth, we already know is one, so this is one times i, which is i. What about i to the sixth? i to the sixth is i to the fourth times i squared. i to the fourth, we already know, is one. i squared is negative one, so this is one times negative one, which is negative one. What about i to the seventh? i to the seventh is what? i to the fourth times i to the third. Again, i to the fourth is just one, and i to the third, we already know from here, is negative i. So one times negative i is negative i. Now we see a pattern starting to form, right? One i, negative one, negative i. One i, negative one, negative i. And this pattern is going to repeat forever, okay? Next is i to the eighth. i to the eighth is one. i to the fifth. Oh, sorry, i to the, we already did i to the fifth. Um, let's fix that. i to the ninth would actually be next i to the ninth is i. Next would be i to the tenth. i to the tenth is going to be negative 1. And then i to the eleventh is negative i. Okay, so what's the pattern here? Well, first of all, i raised to any multiple of 4, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, is going to give us positive 1. Okay. So why is that true? Well, let's say we take a really large multiple of 4. For example, i to the, well, let's use, a, let's use our different color here. So let's say we have i, oops, there we go, i raised to the 100th power. We know 100 is a multiple of 4, right? So that's going to be i to the 4 times 25, OK? Now, rules of exponents, uh, they tell us that we can rewrite this as i to the 4th to the 25th power. Okay, So i to the 4th, we know that that's 1. So this is 1 to the 25th, which is just 1. Now, what's special about the 25 here? Absolutely nothing. Okay, The only thing that was special here is this 4, because the 4 gives us i to the 4th, which is 1. So the 25 is really inconsequential. Uh, the point here is that if we take i and raise it to any multiple of 4, okay, we're going to have just 1. i raised to any multiple of 4 is just 1. So we can use that fact to greatly simplify things like this. Okay, So for example, 53 is 52 plus 1. And 52 is a multiple of 4. Okay, 13 times 4 is 52. So this equals i to the 52nd. Or so let's say i to the 52 plus 1, which is i to the 52 times i to the first. i to the 52, that's i raised to a, a multiple of 4. So that's just 1. And then i to the first is just i. So our result is just i. Okay, And that's it for that. So let's do a couple more examples that exploit this nice little pattern here. So before we erase all this, just want to say i raised to a multiple of 4 is 1. If we raise i to 1 more than a multiple of 4, for example, 1, 5, or 9, or 13, so on and so forth, the result is i. If we raise i to 2 more than a multiple of 4, like 2, 6, 10, we're going to get negative 1. If we raise i to 3 more than a multiple of 4, 
for example, 3, 7, 11, and so on, that we get negative i. Okay? And that pattern just keeps repeating. So let's erase all this and do one more quick example here. So let's say we have i raised to the 300 and, oh, let's say 27th. Okay? Now, 327 is 324 plus 3. 324 is divisible by 4. Now, if you're not sure how to check if something is divisible by, so, excuse me, you're not sure how to check if something is divisible by 4, what you can do is just look at the last two digits. Okay? If the last two digits of a number are divisible by 4, then the entire number is divisible by 4. So we know that 24 divided by 4 is 6. So 324 is evenly divisible by 4. So 327 is 324 plus 3. So this is i to the 324 plus 3, which is i to the 324 times i cubed. And we know that i to the 324 is 1 because 324 is a multiple of 4. i raised to any multiple of 4 is 1. And then i cubed, we already know from our original pattern finding, that's negative i. So this is 1 times negative i, which is negative i. And that's another example of finding powers of i. And that in general also, that's also how we do this in general. So just determine, is, it a multiple, is your exponent a multiple of 4? Is it 1 more than a multiple of 4? Is it 2 or 3 more than a multiple of 4? And use that pattern that we discovered in the beginning, near the beginning of this video.